these last quick questions here, they dropped in multiple times across the presentation. So I think they're pretty much open to, to everyone. And the first one was just asking about a forward look, and it was just asking if the panel anticipated a growth in demand for telehealth even post-COVID, given convenience and familiarity with video components and with respect HIPAA restrictions if they were eased during the COVID pandemic to allow greater use of telehealth, do you imagine this would continue even in a post-COVID world? So uh, uh, quite, a, quite a big question there. Don't know who wants to have the first show at that. Sure. I'll, I'll take the first stab at that answer and others may want to chime in. Um, if we were to put a percentage on how much telehealth is being used pre-COVID, I'm just making this up, but for an illustration, I would put it at probably like 20%. And then during COVID and up till now, it's jumped to probably in the 80% range. Um, it will drop off and it is dropping off um, post-COVID, but it's going to drop off back to something like 50%. Now, 20 80, 50 percent. I'm just made up those, but I'm trying to give a proportion. But but part of what's happened is is there's been an increase of using telehealth for something like virtual visits because I you know you couldn't go see your 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 doctor in the office in person, so you had to do it over video. That is going to come down in the sense that there will be some people that will return to going to their doctor's office in person. But it won't go back to where it was before COVID because uh, there are a lot of people that kind of like doing it <laughs> virtually. It's certainly more convenient. You don't have to sit in the waiting room um, you know, possibly being exposed to other people in the waiting room. Uh, but it's also quicker. It's faster. It's more convenient. So that's got staying power. But what really has grown and won't scale back is all the new ways that virtual care or telehealth is being used to deliver care. That's going to continue to expand and it's going to keep going up and up. Uh, you know, I said that there was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about a half a dozen to a, a dozen established telehealth programs pre COVID 19. I think post it's going to be more like you know, 40, 50 established telehealth use cases and programs stretching across the entire continuum of care, um, a lot of it in inpatient, um, where it's just better care to bring, you know, like I said earlier, that remote virtual team on top of the bedside team working in tandem and in coordination and collaboration to deliver faster, quicker, more uh, efficient, uh, and more informed care. Uh, so I, I see it as Again, it's that upward trajectory going forward. And this is Wendy. I would agree with Pete about it is going to go forward. It's going to still, it's not, it might come down a little bit, but it's still going to go forward. And it is so much easier to take my mom to a doctor's visit sitting at the kitchen table than it is having to get her dressed, having to get her in the car and do all those things. But from the security side, I think that is definitely going to go back. I mean, there's so many cyber threats and so many cases you hear every day of people's information being stolen. They'll reel that back in um, just from a security standpoint. So you definitely need to plan for that if you haven't planned for that now. Um, and along with that, you'll you'll definitely need to make sure you know that environment's secure and that you get rid of all those baby monitors and get rid of all those things that you have out there because um, it's going to be important to lock this down. What I think might not change though is. They did open up the ability for physicians and nurses to practice across state lines. And I think that's going to end up opening way up to where you'll just have one universal license to be able to practice across the U.S. Um, in general. 